Hi, welcome to the Highlands of Scotland and the launch of the Triumph Tiger Explorer XC. Now you could argue that the Tiger Explorer XC hardly deserves to be a separate model in its own right. Triumph created it by taking the existing Tiger Explorer, fitting a selection of accessories, then giving it a fresh lick of paint and renaming it by adding the initials XC, standing for cross country. Is that a bit cheeky? Well, it might seem that way, but really that's all BMW have been doing for years to make the R1200 GS Adventure from the standard GS. The Explorer XC doesn't have a massive petrol tank like the GS Adventure, but it has essentially been created with the same aim of improving off-road ability. Its most important features are arguably the wire spoke wheels, which are stronger than the standard model's cast ones, better at resisting punctures and more easy to repair. Tubular steel crash bars and the aluminium bash plate are also intended to prevent damage off-road. You get plastic hand guards to protect against both the wind and stray branches. There's a pair of spotlights for extra illumination, and along with white or grey paintwork, the XC comes in khaki green for a bit of military toughness. Elsewhere, the XC follows the standard Explorer, so it has the same 1215cc three-cylinder engine with shaft final drive. Like the standard bike, it's tall and quite heavy, at 267 kilos with fuel, so almost 590 pounds, but pleasant and easy to ride on the road. The engine makes 135 horsepower with very smooth, flexible power delivery that gives heaps of torque from low revs. That means the Triumph's pretty quick and it also handles very well for a big bike. Its riding position is upright and roomy, the seat is comfortable and adjustable for height, which helps if you don't have long legs, although it's still a pretty tall bike. The screen is also quickly adjustable and gives a decent amount of wind protection, even if you are tall. The unchanged 20 litre tank is good for roughly 200 miles, which OK isn't as far as an adventure, but it's enough for most riders and most situations. And of course, it's off-road that the XC comes into its own. Up here in the Scottish Highlands, we got to ride on some fantastic dirt tracks on the Alvey Estate near Inverness. For serious off-road use, the Triumph's not quite in the same league as the likes of the latest Star 1200 GS or KTM's 1190 Adventure. These are lighter and they have quickly selectable riding modes that incorporate off-road settings for traction control and ABS. The Explorer doesn't have alternative riding modes, although its traction control does have an off-road setting. And although the ABS works fine on the road, it's not designed for loose surfaces. So try it for a little behind the best of the competition here, and they don't have an electronic suspension option either, as some bikes do in this class. But having said that, the Triumph suspension worked well. It has plenty of travel, it soaked up bumps efficiently, and the damping kept good control. On rougher bits were a few clonks as the bash plate did its job by fending off rocks thrown up by the front tyre. Tyres tend to be a bit of a limiting factor when you take dual purpose bikes off road, but the XC's Metz torrances are some of the best, and they manage to grip pretty well, at least when it's dry. The Y wheel's extra strength is reassuring when you hit a big pothole too. One of our group's bikes was put out of action when its radiator was holed by a flying stone. The answer to that would have been the radiator guard from Triumph's accessory list, which should perhaps be included in the XC specification. There's a good selection of other extras, included heated grips and seat, plus top box and panniers, which help make the Triumph an excellent touring bike. In fact, of course, you could actually create the XC by fitting the standard Explorer with accessories, although by the time you'd paid a dealer to fit the parts, it'd cost a bit more to do it that way. So as to whether the Explorer XC deserves to be a separate model, I'm still not sure about that. But the Triumph certainly gives a good honest performance, plenty of comfort and a touch of three-cylinder character. And then in this form it's impressively versatile too. If you're really serious about going off-road, there are still better options out there. But for mostly road riding, with the occasional off-road excursion, the big triple is fun to ride and tough enough for the job.